Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Tyranny with me, Bring It On. And before we continue, I do want to take my some. My armor isn't getting any cleaner standing here. Some consumables, uh, whetstone for my main character. Verse will take the fish. I'm gonna target the uh, consumables that last for 750 seconds, since that does seem to be the longest duration that a consumable can last. Uh, resolve or vitality? He has plenty of vitality. Let's go with resolve. And then Lantry. Fruit for that plus 1.25 to wits. Alright. Let's continue deep into the keep. Actually. One more thing real fast. Let's give this back to her. There's Tarkus, that's Ebb, Sage, Sage Apprentice. All right. Well, let's go. Don't like how Beric's standing behind me. <laughs> that's uh, not how I had my party positioned. So, you're the vanguard of Kairos' conquest. Not as tall as I imagined, but we can't all choose our executioners. Already, word of our defiance spreads throughout the lands. You're seven kinds of stupid if you think our war ends here. Before you stands Captain Tarkas Ari, de facto leader of the dwindling Vendrian Guard. Short, sunburned, and agitated, even when standing still. Her body is a compact sculpture of muscle and bone, and her face is short in symmetry thanks to the scars and dents of a dozen brushes with death. Though your lives will certainly end here, here in Ascension Hall. Uh, she chortles, pointing upward to the ceiling, a stone arch is somehow supporting the massive weight of the spire overhead. Consider yourself fortunate. Some of the finest rulers of Apex met death by duel in this hollowed hall. Truly, there's no finer place to settle an intractable feud. Sisters, brothers, Ari looks back to her cotter of soldiers with a solemn nod. It has been a privilege to lead, and an honor to share in your final days. Taking a deep breath, she turns to you, waiting silently. Uh, let's see, yeah. What did you hope to gain from your rebellion? Nothing that we haven't already gained. Our pride, our dignity, these things you can never take from us. She smiles, her eyes distant for a moment. The Vendrian Guard could never stand against all of Kairos' for forces. We can't teach others to resist. And maybe you'll run out of soldiers before we run out of stubbornness. But I doubt it. You already use Kairos' currency. Speak the language. Military control is a formality. But that's... Ari stammers swatting at the air. That's just sophistry. Kairos speaks our language, not the other way around. Besides, that proves nothing other than common history. But the Fate Binder is saying that Kairos is not just one enemy, but a massive force that can reach you even in times of peace. Armies and edicts are just two of the bloodier ways Kairos can control you. Yeah, it seems your uprising amounted to nothing but dead kinsmen. And what did taking Vendrian's well cost you? How many disfavored corpses rust in the valley? How many choirmen fell to our blades? How goes the endless battle at the blade grave where you, uh, while you deal with us here? Ari laughs, wincing as she clutches her side. And tell me, are the Archons unified in victory? Did the armies bond in camaraderie over our deaths? Our stand here is the first of your problems. How did you know the Archons were feuding? We're hopeless, not witless. Our eyes and ears tell us much. Ari covers her mouth, stifling a smile. I'll die happy knowing your invasion will grind to a halt as the two Archons tear each other to pieces over the title of victor. Perhaps my only regret is not living to see which child king will win. If you're so eager to fall on my blade, stop prattling and come at me. Or are you gutless as well? Uh, any last words? Yes. A broad smile comes over Ari's face. Tell the voice of Narat we are most thankful for his aid. We would not have made it this far without his support. Oh. 
See, I wonder if she's trying to manipulate me or if he really helped out. Hmm. All right, first things first, buff up. I'm not a big fan of Barrick being behind, but sorry, he has a taunt we can throw out and do. Of course. Uh, don't forget. Uh, let's go ahead and just use this. <laughs> Only 29% chance to hit that one. Uh, let's hit her instead. Oh gosh. Alright, uh, let's do a Sunder back here. Lantry. Haste him, please. Should probably get out of this AoE. We'll be fine, though. I find Sunder this guy, I guess. And. Other skull. Heal yourself up, main character. Lantry, heal yourself up. Heal's not off cooldown, but barracks should be. Oh no. Oh no. It's a lot of prone characters. He should be able to use... Oh, he's still prone? Alright, good. He's still kicking. Nope. He's just using Restoring Touch. What am I doing? Get over here and heal him, please. Lantry, you still have buffs you need to be casting. What the fuck is wrong with... My weapon? Alright, please cast your taunt now. Alright, good, we're still in this. No problem. Wait, how is she... Oh, she's drowning. Spellcasting is disabled, okay. Uh, go ahead and sunder this oh. guy. Followed by a thrust. Actually, no, use your healing ability. Now we're doing okay. We're doing mighty, mighty fun, actually. You got it. <laughs> All right, so far so good. Let's go ahead and use this right here. Daze all those guys in front of my character. Spellcasting is still disabled for her. That's fine. Is this buff still up? Titan's touch is about to wear off, so let's go ahead and recast that. Go ahead and cast this since I hit all three of them. And that means his Titan's touch is probably going to wear off here for me too. Even better. Alright, what else do we got? I guess Touch of Atrophy this guy. Alright, hang in there. Can you spell cast yet? Nope. Go 
do it that way then. Let's get some heals on Verse, keep on. her alive. Hang in there, Verse. Sunder and uh she doesn't anything else up. Let's attack this guy. Yeah, that works. That works indeed. Alright, let's cast this again. Greater renewal and Awesome. Alright, let's get the sages up. Did we take out Tarkus already? We did. Seems like the hard part's over. We just have to clean up now. Not a problem, boss. Next time. That's how it's Let's take care of the archer next. Skewer, uh, thrust, and. You got it. In fact, Barrack, you just come up here and engage these two. Easy peasy. Consider it done. Good work, Barrick. I will aid you. <laughs> I got it. All right, good kill. Let us. I'm gonna cast this because I'm gonna run this way anyway. Right into the line of fire. <laughs> Rhyme Spike. Let's just throw some magic at these two. Get some easy experience while we still can. Well, actually, you just go ahead and use Eternal Flame right here. I'm on it. All right, and then Ebb. Haste him, and then we just clean up. Well, we've just been cleaning up for a little while now. We're almost done. You got it. <laughs> I got it. Job well done. Let's read these descriptions real fast. Oh, that's weird. All right, you worthless gnats. We may die, but others will follow our example. Mark my words. The captain coughs up blood. You bested their leadership. Most impressive. Remind me to never underestimate the skills of a fate binder. Betray Alliance, no thank you. I'm honored to have had a hand in the glory. Is it his favorite who should be honored? 
You've been with us from start to finish of this long conquest. From the gates of judgment to this, our very moment of victory. Thank you, Donald. For that you have given it for all that you have given the Legion. Outbreak. The clatter and madness of combat has finally ceased. Ascension Hall is, for a moment, tranquil. Oh, we got favor with the Scarlet Chorus, too. May Pox take your children. Ari slumps to a crouch, her body trembling from injury and fatigue. With those words of defeat, the burning hum you've heard in your head for days on end tapers off into nothing. Your mind returns to a state of quiet you have not felt since before you proclaimed the edict upon Vendrian's well. I lay claim to Ascension Hall. Let us be free of this edict. You feel a tug in your chest as a warm energy begins to form around you. Before you know it, you feel as if you're lighter than air. That's the end of Gladiator. I would have liked to had read those descriptions. Or read those descriptions. Before teleporting to the top of the spire. You blink away the last of the luminescent trails in your field of vision. The masonry of Ascension Hall is replaced with a wide open space in every direction, save for the slab of ancient stone beneath your feet. High winds shove you, pushing you off balance. The air is cool and thin, unsatisfying to your lungs. Is this? Lantry looks out onto Lantry looks out to the horizon, wide eyed with excitement. Yes, this must be the mountain spire. When was the last time? Lantry's eyes look down over the ledge. Dumbstruck by the vertical plunge, Landry backs away from the, the edge. I may need to retch. Well, this is certainly a change. The wind ruffles the feathers in her hair. Reverse quickly smooths them down. A darn cold change. She peers over the edge. Think I could land on my feet if I jumped? Not that it would matter for long. Kairos be merciful. What now? Beric spins around on his feet, looking about trying to take in as much as he can through the narrow visor of his helmet. Poor guy. <laughs> Everywhere you look, mountains rise up along a distant horizon. The rivers and forests below bring to mind maps of Vendrian's will, and you quickly trace the Matani, the Erenev, and all the numerous waterways of the region. Higher than you imagined, this is indeed the pinnacle of the spire of Vendrian's will. How did we get all the way up here? Ari strains to stand up, clutching her side. Another question. How in the name of Graven Ash do we get down? The Iron Marshal walks to the edge, shumbling a half pace back as she peers downward. The warriors below must be sensing that the edict is ended. We should be down there by their side. Much as I would relish the opportunity to fight alongside that is favored right now, I cannot begin to imagine the chaos unfolding beneath our feet. Barry clenches his fist with a squeal of metal and turns away. You send word to Graven Ash that we are successful. That was a worthy battle. Not since Stalwart have I seen such courage, such determination. Oh, but the siege needed you spans ago. Agreed. I'd be honored to deliver your auspicious message in person, but... She points down over the edge. Ha <laughs> Oh man. No, I'm not going to do that. I think the blast of magic from the spire and the edict's end should have been clear to everyone. But Graven Ash will want to know you are safe. Go through that portal and report to Graven Ash. Then return to me with any news. No telling how stable it is. But look closely and you'll see images of Ascension Hall in the haze. Well, if you have trained eyes, that is. Of course, even if it's not stable, 
The alternative is jumping. So, what do we have to lose? Well, how did I not notice that? The portal shimmering contours glimmer the moment you call out its presence. Assuming this takes me back to Ascension Hall, I'll carve a path to Ash and let him know the score. With resounding clatter, Rainios beats her breastplate in salute. Glory to Kairos. Salute the Iron Marshal. Thank you for being the edge of our blade. We've been shorthanded ever... Even since we took the Gates of Judgment. It should be ever, right? Ever since we took the Gates of Judgment. And these Oathbreakers fight well above their station. Without you and my vanguard, this would have been a bloodier day. And there's no telling if we would have seized Ascension Hall in time. If we had six whole days, it would have been... It would have been okay. Benjamin's will is yours. Hold it for the glory of Tunon. It'd be wise for us to place court-held lands between us and the enemy. That way, the course cannot fortify around us without giving offense to the Archon of Justice. Nerat's treachery means war. I trust we'll be able to rely on your continued support in the coming trials. No doubt in the very definition of an enemy of the Overlord. I didn't just resist, I led others into resistance. So I know what's about to happen, but I know when I've met my match, and like most folk, I'll do whatever it takes to live. If you will show me mercy, I'll pledge my life to you, good fate binder. The Tidecaster bows on one knee, lowering her gaze. I know I'm an Oathbreaker, so my word isn't what it used to be. But I promise, if you spare me, I will serve you well. Why would I possibly trust you? Because I'm all out of reasons to fight you. The Vendrian Guard and the School of Tides are no more leaving me with no loyalties or ties to, well, anyone. We must all bow to Kairos' minions eventually, right? I would die before swearing fealty to the voice of Narat, and Graven Ash would kill me in a heartbeat. If I am to serve anyone in this new order, it should and must be the Archon of Justice, and you are the only servant of Tunon I can thank to ask. Yes, yeah, serve me well, and all can be forgiven. If you have my fealty, it is yours. I... Ebba the Tidecasters do hereby pledge my life in loyalty to Donald. She dips in a formal bow. I will serve and obey so long as you have need or want of my skills. Alright, we're going to hold off on recruiting her yet. Or putting him in my party yet. Alright, Vengeance Well has fallen. For the second time since the conquest began, Kairos' armies take the citadel from its defenders. With your help, the Vendrian Guard Rebellion has been crushed. You claimed Ascension Hall with your disfavored allies, satisfying the terms of Kairos' baleful edict. You and the forces of Kairos are free from the Overlord's death sentence. With the threat of execution no longer looming overhead, the Overlord's armies turn their attention away from the citadel and toward each other. The tensions that flared over the long siege reached an explosive crescendo as the disfavored and scarlet chorus armies clashed iron and bronze in a hasty, disorganized battle. As his forces were cut down, the voice of Nerat and his officers escaped to the Stone Sea, leaving the conscript army to carry on their battle against the disfavored. In the aftermath, the disfavored broke camp and withdrew to their fortress in the Blade Grave. There to regroup and prepare for the extended campaign against the Scarlet Chorus. Having taken Vendrian's will for yourself, Archon Graven Ash recognized your lawful claim to rule and occupy the spire. As days pass, the wounded and injured were nursed to health. You explored your strange bastion and planned your next steps with careful deliberation. As word spreads that the Scarlet Chorus and disfavored turn on each other, factions once resolved to bend the knee were inspired instead to continue fighting. The Archon's feud has heralded the collapse of Kairos' offensive. Tunon, the Archon of Justice, observes the chaos and discord spreading across the land. The Archon summons his Fatebinder return to court at the Bastard City, a report on his actions in Vendrian's Well. Civil War. What a shame that it descended into this. Archon Ash will want to meet and discuss the next steps. Best that you regroup in Iron Hearth. Uh, gather your strength and regroup, but don't leave the Archon waiting. Send Ash my regards. The General has done much for me, and I wish he was here to see this. I'll join the Archon at Iron Hearth after I speak with Tunon. That would be best. 
She shakes her head and looks out on the spire with fresh bewilderment. It's not enough that we're fighting two wars. Now we have to this puzzle. Now we have this to puzzle through. I don't envy your position. See you at Iron Hearth. The dizzying energy from the spire falters. Whatever force awoke the powers that reside here gutters and fades. Uh, though a faint hum persists in the sculpture at the center. That's odd. There's a portal here moments ago, or a moment ago, but it seems to have vanished. Look around for a solution. The humming from the curious sculpture pulses and builds in volume, as if to draw your attention. We'll do. I'll deal with that in just a moment. Let's take a look around real fast. To the east, you can see deep ashen clouds surrounding the burning library. Oh, I got a new. I have a few new things. Hold on. So we got disfavored, or favor the fate binder. This is an active shielded for 80 damage for 30 seconds. Seems pretty good. Wrath of the Vengerian Guard, another active. Drain 2, Resolve, Finesse, and Might for 20 seconds. And a cone. Then Ebb, we got Tyrannus' Embrace. Dawn on Ebb, once per rest, Ebb and the party lifted into the sky. Ebb then radiates moonlight, healing allies and harming enemies. Okay. To the west, you see the Shining Spire of Lethian's Crossing. So let's go and level up on thinking about it. Uh, let's get some more quickness, I think. So that is an active, not a passive. Uh, I might get refuse pain. We have a random hostile effect every three seconds. Seems pretty good. Alright, you know, I'll just grab to arms instead. Alright, so we're going to get five spires. I can hire recruits, okay. Um, all right, so there's only three edicts, fire, stone, and storms. Well, let's read about it. So the Edict of Storms, in the year 430 TR, the Overlord proclaimed an edict over the realm of Stalwart. Those who, in pride and arrogance, stand against the peace and order of our empire, shall be ground beneath the stones of their land. But those who call themselves unbroken... To embrace the chaos of war and defiance of our order, be broken in the storms of our rage. Let our storm rage until the last blade be broken, or the line of regent falls. The Edict of Fire In the year 430 TR, Kairos the Overlord proclaimed an edict over the Vellum Citadel and the contested lands. It is our most solemn duty to protect the citizens of our empire from all the dangers, including the danger of knowledge that is forbidden. Let those who, in their burning arrogance, hold tightly to this lore be consumed by our wrath. Therefore, let the fires of Taratus rise up and consume them, for as long as forbidden knowledge lies within the heart of the Vellum Citadel. An Edict of Stone. In the last year of Kairos' conquest, when the Archon Cairn rebelled against the Overlord's rule, an edict was proclaimed upon the realm of Azur. To preserve our peace, the promise of safety to our citizens, all Archons must submit to our will. Any Archon who refuses proper submission must be brought to justice. Therefore, let the foundations of Azur be shattered, and life drained from the land while the traitor Cairn draws breath. Okay, works for me. All my companions want to talk, we're gonna hold off on that Sorry, until... Sorry, I can't. 
next episode, I think. What do we got here? Level of power. 400. Okay. For Spire, be your home base of adventure throughout the lands. Free location to rest and cover from travels. You require more Spires. You discover additional functionality. Alright, so here's our respect guy. Fatebinder Cesper. So camping supplies periodically, he's a merchant, skill trainer, unarmed attacks, parry dodge, and subterfuge. Isilon. One-handed weapons, parry and athletics, sword breaker, one-handed weapons, two-handed weapons, dodge and athletics. Corpse eye, battlefield scavenger with many unique items for sale. Sounds pretty good to me. A Tanara, a skill trainer who teaches one-handed weapons, two-handed weapons, dual wield, parry, and dodge. Kenrick, a smith who regularly produces weapons. Uh, Lone Fang, old beast woman who regularly provides food to take into battle. And respec. Hmm. A lot of these seem a little redundant. I mean, I'll, I'll probably end up hiring all of them in the end anyway, but... Alright, let's, uh... You know what? Before we start exploring the Spire more, uh, I'm going to call the episode. In the next one, I guess we'll gain our bearings and try and talk to our companions as well. I see a big uh, lore dump coming our way, potentially, so. On it. I'm really tempted to click on it right now, but we're going to wait until next episode. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.